hello dear students so how are you i think you all are fine in this lockdown period today my lecture will be on the permanent settlement that you can say it at the chirasthayi bandobasto main question is who introduced the permanent settlement when was the permanent settlement used how did it affect the peasants and zamindars of bangal so today's class will be based on these topics as you all know that it was due to the great efforts of lord cornwallis that the permanent settlement was introduced in bengal in 1793 ad if you know about bengal of 18th century then that bengal was consisted of nowadays bihar bengal and orissa so lord cornwallis was the british governor he wanted to have more revenue in the hands of the british that is why permanent settlement was started lord cornwallis found several defects in the prevailing system of land revenue the income of the east india company from land revenue was uncertain the company had tried various systems like fixing land revenue on annual basis on 10 year basis that was the sala system and also on the auction system but the elements did not prove successful so as to ensure a definite income on permanent basis yearly fixation of land revenue led to lots of inconvenience it increased the administrative work enormously so under these circumstances the permanent settlement of bengal was introduced so i think undoubtedly there will be no doubt about its starting of permanent settlement because as you know that the area of bengal bihar and odisha is very fertile on the banks of the ganges river lots of good crops can be grown and if lots of good crops can be grown then naturally the income will be more and once the income will be more the british will gain lots of taxes in form of permanent settlement so let us have glance over effects of the permanent settlement in case of peasants the following were the effects of permanent settlement in case of peasants now the peasants became the tenants of the zamindars previously the peasants were the masters of their land but now they became the tenants of the zamindars zamindars seem to be the actual owner of the land the system overlooked the interests of the cultivators who cultivated the land it deprived them of their hereditary rights so next point was the peasants were left absolutely at the mercy of the landlords who could out them at any time if they didn't pay their dues in due time then they may then they may be out of their rights next point was the landlords could charge any amount of money from the peasants he pleased so it was not good for the peasants it is true that lord cornwallis had laid down that the zamindars should keep a register of his tenants and grant them pattas or leases specifying the rents they were to pay and that in case of any infringement of these rules the rayers was to seek a remedy in auction against him in the civil court but unfortunately the registers were not kept and the pattas were rarely given the remedy of the civil court was a very expensive one and the poor peasants felt that they could not take any advantage of it the state affairs continued till the government came to the rescue of the tenants and safeguard the interests by passing 
that is tenancy legislations. The pigeons felt a very terrible time when their crops failed, but they had to pay the revenue to the government at any cost, because if they didn't pay the revenue, they will lose the rights of their, of their own land. So my dear student, just see, the main owner of the land was whom? Indians, Indian pigeons. But now who has taken about their rights? Of course, the British. So it was not good for the, in the interest of the, our Indian pigeons who were very, very poor and socially deprived. Now, let us have a glance of her, the effects of the permanent settlement on Jamindars. What were the effects? What was the impact on the Jamindars? The following can be said, if the, if the effects of the permanent settlement of Jamindars, number one, the Jamindars were recognized as the owners or proprietors of the land. Second, the Jamindars could sell their lands and were given the right to transfer them. Third, the Jamindars acted as the agents of the government for the collection of revenue from the cultivators. Fourth point was the Jamindars gave 10 by 11th of the revenue collected by them from the cultivators to government. Number fifth, the revenue to be paid by the Jamindars was fixed on a permanent basis. That is why it is known as permanent settlement. Sixth point, the Jamindars had to pay the revenue even if the crops failed for some reasons. Next, if the revenue increased from the land on account of improvement in agriculture, extension of agriculture, etc., the Jamindar was allowed to keep the entire increased revenue for himself. That was the main lacuna. Next, in case the Jamindars did not pay, then the land revenue, a part of their land was to be disposed of to recover the land revenue. So next point was, the ministerial powers were taken away from the Jamindars. At last, the Jamindars were left with no police work. So this was the main lesson of this day with a, now I think you all have understood it in a very interesting manner. Thank you, all of you. Have a good day.